Hey there guys, just uh, showing you my watermelons. As you can see, watermelons are growing and um, growing really well. Very happy with this. Watermelons growing everywhere. In there. In here. Over there, over there. Very happy. This end of the crops are growing watermelons everywhere. So very happy with this, guys. These are getting quite big. And these have just come up in the last week, really, with growing. It's amazing how so much growth can come on a watermelon in a short period of time and then after that ripening beautiful look at that all in there so I'm very happy with this and um, I think this is going to be a yearly thing and just get better and better growing watermelons and what I need to do how to do it um, and it's just for the local market and us to eat so yeah not very happy Keep water down there 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 all, all through so that's awesome so once this um uh <coughs> watermelons uh, get picked then the manioka will keep growing so yeah I thought this wasn't gonna go very well at all this year but there's timing for everything timing to hoe timing to spray timing to do all sorts and it's how you actually time everything um, and also the rain Unfortunately, weather plays a big part in growing watermelons. Um, if you get too much rain, they don't do too well. Not enough rain, they don't do too well. Let's be a happy medium. So, you just got to sort of try and predict the weather a little bit. be able to grow some good watermelons yeah uh, yeah wife is calling me we just had breakfast just fed the pigs and the chickens and dogs but yeah so the watermelons over on this side didn't go too well but that's okay Okumala over there and then two rows of um, Beijing manioki and this manioka here is the yellow manioka or cassava. So that's the cassava there. There, yeah. And this is the purple gumala, sweet potato. So I've got to hoe this, especially that part there with the safa. Just hoe that and then hoe the. I only got to hoe it once and then leave it. And then the manioka, hoe it once, then leave it. So I'll pull this. Um, well, actually, I don't know if I'll pull it out or just just pull it out gradually and plant some manioka in there afterwards. I was really going to pull out what we need to eat, really. And then this taro has just grown up by itself. Um, and also this electric fence has worked out really, really well um, with the pigs keeping on one side, even the little piglets. Keeping on one side, you can see. So this uh, netting is not electrified, but those two are, and that keeps them on that side of it. I'll probably put one strand on top to make it three, and I'll have to spray the boundary so the grass doesn't touch the 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 wire. Um, or the, the string going across the electric fence. 
So I'll just spray that with um, some spray so kill the weeds just along the fence line. But otherwise, yeah, it's going really cool. These little piglets doing really well. Come December, yum yum. There's enough for the big male. He's, uh, he's very tame, so is she. But he's starting to grow some tusks. They got all this grass that they can hide in, keep warm in. And that's what the mothers actually build their little nest out of all that grass. And then they had their babies underneath it. But yeah, so this is the Fiji manioke that they call over here. So I just need a hoe down the middle. And once I hoe this, well, I could even spray even, but once I hoe it, um, the manioki will take over, overgrow the weeds. Um, then that'll be it. I won't have to hoe it again. And I'll just hoe that part down there because the grass is starting to overgrow the kumala. So I hoed this a little bit the other day. Just this part here. Uh, yeah. All right, guys. So that's it for now. God bless, eh? Catch you next time. Bye for now.